Why is it, and it, I think this might just be with Channing Tatum's pistol, why does it sound like a dog barking half the time? Because he's a dog man, Kyle. I know, but why does his gun sound like a dog? Because it's part of him, it's his personality. He's like, dog. There, there was a point where they're shooting and- Channing all, Tatum is dog. And I just hear, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That's his gun! <laughs> I did not notice that. Now I would have to go back and pay attention to that. I did not notice. Maybe it's him. Maybe he makes that noise whenever he shoots <laughs> That's the gun. Battle cry. <laughs> <laughs>Back to the learn board episode of Combat or Babbage. Show me watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Ryan Chilgo. Joined as always, the other host, back in the flesh in the studio, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle, we're on our 104th episode. Last week we did a sword and sandals classic. Yeah. yeah. She not really. It's post apocalyptic. It, it's very reminiscent of like He Man. Yes, uh, but it's she. Your people will be mine, goddess. <laughs> <laughs> This week, we're going to the blockbuster. I thought we were going to the future, but then I was like, no, this takes place in the present. Day. The present day Chicago and the universe abroad. It is Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> Kyle, I have a lot of notes, so we're just going to get right to it. We start with Jupiter, a babe. No. We can start... Is she an adult when we first see her? Cleaning toilets? Or is that... No, that's yeah. after. Well, like, she's born first. Yes, she's born first. Oh, that's right. So we start, uh, and she gives them a little monologue about how she's technically an illegal alien. Technically speaking, I'm an alien. And from the perspective of immigration, an illegal one. Kyle, real quick. Okay. What <laughs> is her? What is she? They are human. They are human beings. Even the even most like the, of the Abraxas aliens, people. Yes, they are all human beings. Wait, really? Yes, because they all have the like uh, the character Jupiter yes. has the exact same DNA. Yeah. When the exact same genes reappear in the exact same order, it is for us what you would call reincarnation. But how could I be a reincarnation of your mother unless your mother was from Earth? But yeah, so but they're how all does humans she have because the same they, DNA. because the humans were brought to that planet years ago. So, you've been taught that the birthplace of the human race is Earth, but it's not. It's actually a planet in the cannabulum system called Aurus. Wait, so is this movie in the Prometheus universe? <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah. God! You can't get away from it. <laughs> or it's like the same thing. Because they, they say throughout the film that she has the exact same DNA as their mother, Abraxas' yes. mother queen lady. But it's like a coincidence or something like she just I think so when the exact same genes reappear in the exact same order it is for us what you would call reincarnation she's like it's, it, it, the second yeah, coming it, it's like, like there's nothing that's special about her it, yeah her like she wasn't or anything yeah she doesn't have a her parents weren't like from that lineage necessarily or anything other than that everybody's from that lineage technically because mm -hmm. they're humans but then they uh, oh, but then they'd farm them? I, we'll yeah. get there. It's very confusing. Of course, of course they farm them. It's a fucking Wachowski film. The, the Matrix, their batteries and tubes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that is what we get to at the end of this movie. Uh, so it is... She's she's born on a ship. Uh, oh, I gotta talk about the shakedown. Because <laughs> that, I was like... I was, oh. I, I was watching and I was like, what is... Is this gonna be a thing? Who is this? What's going on? Yeah. Never find anything out about so it. So originally, I guess the parents are from the USSR. One of them is, and one of them's British. Like the mom is Russian, and I think the dad is British, working in Russia. Yeah. My parents met at the university in St. Petersburg, where he taught astrophysics, and she taught applied mathematics. They meet with him stargazing. That doesn't really matter other than a telescope. Just remember that, I guess. It's kind of not really important, mm -hmm. like most of the things in this film. Um, <laughs> I also love this movie, but hate it. Um, <laughs> so the, 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 the her parents meet, and then um, as she's pregnant, the mom is pregnant with Jupiter, Jupe, 
as <laughs> she is called <laughs> throughout the movie. Um, her the Russian mob shows up. And just murders the dad. <laughs> just murder the. Send the telescope, please. Don't take the telescope, please. It's like and no, I, don't take my telescope, even though I have uh, my. It, I guess are they married? I don't know. My, I, I think my it does the, yeah, I don't know. wife equivalent and ch- unborn child. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they just shoot him because they were taking his telescope. And I thought this was going to come back in having some sort of like these people were somebody. Mm. No. no. Never, never referenced again. It was just a random Russian mob shakedown, I guess, is what happened. I don't know. Uh, we never find out. So then her mom goes to America mm. uh, and she's born on the ship on the way there as Jupiter is ascending. But I was born in the house of Leo. With Jupiter rising at 23 degrees ascendant. Get it? That's the title of the movie. And also, she, her name's Jupiter and she ascends. It's double meaning, Kyle. <laughs> it's double meaning. Uh, so it's basically Cinderella for a while. Problem with astrology? Total bullshit. She mm-hmm. is a maid. Mm-hmm. Uh, she cleans toilets. Um, for she, a she also goes like for all the families that they hire her family, yeah. hire her service. She yeah. works alongside with like her, her mom family. and stuff. Yeah. So for all those people that hire her, she also goes through all their shit. <laughs> yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Because we see her at the beginning. She's like going through their jewelry and like, yeah. trying it on and stuff. Uh, and so she's she's made and that's like her setup. And then uh, we're introduced to Eddie Redmayne like very early in the movie and the, the yes. siblings. We're introduced <laughs> to the siblings, I think, all at once. Um and I like I like to call the the young one um, uh, Titus is his I like name. to call him uh, Jawman. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the man is handsome. The man has a jawline that does not quit. Yeah, cut glass with it. Um, that's Titus. He's the youngest, I believe. Mm. Then there's the sister, which I can't remember her name. K- K- something with a C, maybe. I don't. Yeah. Remember. Where am I? This is the Alcazar of Kalik Abrasic. We gotta talk about Eddie Redmayne. Mm. In this film, is <laughs> this choice that he makes in this movie? You you have to think it was him. Who I didn't know there's no way it wasn't him. He was like he, he. Now I will say that I think that it is part of the plot. Mm-hmm. Do we? Did you catch catch that? Why he probably talks this way? I guess we'll talk not. about it now. We'll just talk about it now because there's no reason this movie's chaos and nonsense. We'll uh, might as well just talk about it. <laughs> so the whole movie, he just whispers. Mm. Most of them are miserable in their lives, and what we do for them is a mercy. And then screams. Mm. The double our security deployment to destroy any ship that comes near the planet. Ah! And it's those two levels. Those are his. Act- he's here or he's here. Like the, the, it, it, that's it. But when he whispers, he has this weird, like, And I want Miss Dunleavy found. And I want her dead. Like that, right? Mm. I think the reason he does that, when we're introduced to uh, Channing Tatum's character, Kane Wise, <laughs> what a name, um, he's... He's a, a, a wolf man, boy, dog person. I'm a splice. You don't understand what that means, but I have more in common with a dog than I have with you. And he hells, tells this story about the reason he got kicked out of the Legionnaire was because he ripped the throat out of some higher up. It's actually entitled. He bit him. He bit him? Tore his throat out. Royal person. We think it was him. I think it was Eddie Redmayne, and it's never addressed in the movie. I think it was Eddie Redmayne, and the reason he talks like that is they somehow healed him, but it's still not quite yeah. better. Well, Which think, doesn't make any sense. You think it would just be healed? Also, you think they would have just killed Channing Tatum? Yeah, and not just. Oh yeah, you're right. They would have just killed him. I maybe this. Maybe I'm trying to read too much. I have no idea. But I thought that was the only thing that made sense because mm. that is an element that they numerous times talk about him ripping the throat out of some person, but. 
there there is one person that Eddie Redmayne reminded me of the entire time I watched him. A barf and, from Spaceballs. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he reminded me of Gary Oldman's character from The Fifth Element. Yes. Torture who you have to, the president. I don't care. Just bring me those stones. You have money. Okay, so that's the other thing about this movie. It's it could be the fifth element, but it's not because it takes itself too seriously. <laughs> it could be a lot of things. Yes, but it's not. I'll talk about that at the now, end. Now, granted, some people might say, "Well, that's an argument for originality." Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it's because that's the thing. There's a lot of really interesting ideas in this movie in terms of like it tries to do something unique yeah. and interesting. The only problem is other people executed it. Oh, much better. That that for sure. <laughs> and also, I think my biggest problem with the movie is it takes itself too seriously because it, it they shoot what my 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 like summation of this movie when I got done with it was that this movie attempts to be Star Wars but ends up a prequel when it could have just been guardians of the galaxy and it would have been great, mm. but it, or, or fifth element, but it doesn't, it takes itself too seriously to be those movies. And then, and as a result ends up looking like literally like a prequel by the end where it's just like chaos and nonsense and yeah. loud noises and flying lizards. <laughs> Um, so Eddie Redmayne inherited Earth, we find out, yeah. from his mother. Uh, they These these people inherit whole planets um, because they use them, we find out later, to mine for human juice. <laughs> Naturally, my sister didn't explain what it is or where it comes from. It comes from people. <laughs> That's literally what happens. Um, so he inherited Earth, but there also is this other person that has claim to Earth that they think and they're trying to find her I don't know how they found out that she became how Mila Kunis how, I don't know how they found out about her to mm -hmm. begin with but they somehow then decide they need to track her down so that they can kill her so he can kill her there there's a lot of questions throughout this film mostly on the grounds that 90% of this film takes place in the solar system yeah in our solar yeah. system and NASA's like, I guess we can't see shit. They destroy half of Chicago, Kyle, and then the movie just goes, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> they literally destroy Sears Tower or whatever, Willis Tower or whatever it's called now. Mm -hmm. And then the movie just literally, like, uh, they use a fo the Photoshop uh, render or, like, repair tool and it's like... And then it's fine, and then we never talk about it again. You cannot just blow up a bunch of buildings and get away with it. Those buildings will be rebuilt by tonight. That's impossible. Also, and when we see them this first time, it's very obvious they're all wearing like old, old people, people makeup. makeup that's like not as good as it should be, considering the yeah. rest of the makeup in this movie is pretty good. There, there was some. There was something because Eddie Redmayne's got some some wicked um, crow's feet, crow's feet <laughs> yeah. on throughout this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they do that so that they can de-age them with the the human juice later. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's it's kind of obvious old person makeup. It doesn't look super great in my opinion. And you look so well. Could it be that failure? Agrees with you. So there's three hunters, uh, and they're seeing. Chan then we cut back to Earth, and there's like the three hunters who are looking for Channing Tatum. I no, they're looking for the girl. Mm -hmm. They're looking for. I think they're looking for Mila Kunis at this point. She's Doesn't under. Matter. She's under a false name though. Yeah, she's. So that's that's the big next plot element that took me a minute to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Is that so? Mila Kunis is going to sell her eggs, mm -hmm. right? Why do they have to use words like harvesting? It's just creepy. Because she needs money, because she's a poor family, and she's gonna her her brother slash friend cousin, cousin, cousin is going to buy. <laughs> I'm just reminded of the uncle. You don't treat your cousin like a chicken. <laughs> you don't treat your cousin like chicken. Yeah, that was pretty good. I did I did enjoy said there the family dynamic of them in this film. Use whatever you like. I'm like Stalin to me. Stalin, I'm Stalin. You don't want the money. I will give it to uh, Gleb's crew. I'm good. Uh, so, but anyway, so they're all looking for her, including mm. Channing Tatum. Mm. Um, and there, there's a big shootout in the alleyway here, which I thought was funny because there's three people all shooting at Channing yeah, well, Tatum. Well, this is the first time we, we are introduced oh, to the Channing moon Tatum's his, his space gates, is his what I like to call gates. them. <laughs> ah, 
<laughs> yeah, he does. He has dope ass space skates um, because he got his wings cut off because mm. he's a fallen angel. It's not pretty, is it? Clipped and stripped, the mark of a court martial skyjacker. Symbolism. Um, fallen and, angel werewolf man. <laughs> fallen angel werewolf lichen. Lichen. He has. They call him like lichen something. Anyways. He's a lichen tent without a pack. Yeah, and so there's a big shootout. He's got a shield, which I thought was cool. Mm. Um, but he's got his space boots, and he and he three highly trained mercenaries, and none of them are able to hit him once. Okay. <laughs> I, I have to I I have to get into a little bit of a, a technical thing. Not a really technical thing here, but a choice, a, a very interesting choice. Why is it? And it, I think this might just be with Channing Tatum's pistol. Why does it sound like a dog barking half the time? Because he's a dog man. Pile. I know, but why does his gun sound like a dog? Because it's part of him. It's his personality. He's like, dog. There was, there was a point where they're shooting. And Channing all, Tatum is dog. And I just hear, woof, woof. Like, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That's his gun. <laughs> I did not notice that. Now I have to go back and pay attention to that. I did not notice. Maybe it's him. Maybe he makes that noise whenever he shoots <laughs> the gun. It's a battle cry. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, they they try to get him, but he gets away. Uh, there's some there's there's some really uh, actually epically cool looking stuff in this movie. Like there's a shot early on where Eddie Redmayne's ship is flying through some clouds and like coming into the atmosphere of this planet that looks fucking dope. There's some really and then there's like there's this weird mismatch of things that look really cool like that mm -hmm. and cinematic, and then just chaos on the screen that is literally nothing. Like the the space fights at the end of this movie look like a Transformers mm -hmm. movie puked and fucked another tran. That doesn't make any sense, but. It's fucking chaos. Um, uh, the style, it's weird. It's so weird. Cause like the style feels so much like uh, Guillermo, Guillermo, Guillermo del, Toro. del Toro. It feels a lot like that. A little but bit, yeah. More like, you know, sci-fi. So. Yeah. But like, there's a lot of set design in how he, how he display, how they display the atmosphere of this place. That feels like I'm watching a Hellboy film. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it does. It's a little, because they're going for like, fa it's like fantasy mixed with like, yeah, sci-fi. I mean, it's supposed to be a space opera. Mm -hmm. It is a space opera. It's very clearly a space opera with like fairy tale influences. Um, so you get a little bit of Guillermo del Toro. You get a little bit of uh, Terry Gilliam at times <laughs> later it's on. A, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a space opera uh, constantly stuck in third gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, no, yes, it's fucking wild. It has been too long. I have not crossed the vastness of space for your pleasantries, Mr. Knives. Um, at this point, we, Katie and I watched this together. She turned to me at this point and goes, do I not understand what's happening because it doesn't make sense or because I haven't been paying super close attention or because this makes literally no sense? And I was like, it's because it makes literally no sense. Yep. Um, uh, so then we were, this is where we're introduced to Catherine Dunleavy, who's the woman that she works, that Mila Kunis works for, who she's pretending, using her name to sell mm -hmm. her eggs. And that's, that's this character. And they almost get abducted at this point by aliens. <laughs> Which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she takes a picture of it, but then they MIB flash her. Yeah. And, and she I I don't understand why they have to wait for okay, so like they they found this person, right? They found uh was Catherine, Catherine Dunleavy. Yeah, they, so they found her. They tested her DNA. It's yeah. Like, oh, it's not that person. It's not her. There there's another person here. What is it? Do you think it's incredibly expensive or time consuming to inject somebody with that to check their DNA? You would think not. Why not just do it again they, yeah, with her right there? Right, right there. Because then we got to have the cool, crazy scene in the in the the egg harvesting room later where they're all the doctors are aliens. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But they don't t check her then. They just it might be whoop, mind wiper and then but they don't remember to get the photo off her phone yeah. <laughs> they just and then they run off so then and some stuff happens she talks to her cousin about wanting to buy a telescope blah 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 it doesn't matter uh, she goes and gets her egg to get her eggs harvested um, and this is when she gets abducted again but then this time Channing Tatum saves the day oh 
skates in on his moon boots, uh, his space skates, um, and and shoots everybody and flips around. And the whole time she's floating, it's wild. It's this whole it's quick wild. Thing, quick yeah, thing. go ahead. Um, this is just me being like frugal. Why you want a four thousand dollar brass telescope? Right. You can get one significantly cheaper. Do you right. want it just to stargaze? Right. Well, see, my thought is that it's literally the telescope her dad had, and she it's like calls to her somehow they're, through they're, the universe. They're, they're on eBay. Yeah. Just to, yeah. And which weird, weird thing is, this is not an old movie. No. No, it's like 2015. Or Amazon would make 16. more sense. But yeah, I would. I would no, love because, for the, but no, it has to be eBay because it is. Li- when I say the same telescope, oh, I mean it's it have, literally like, down, his telescope. Does it have down at the cellar Russian? Russian. <laughs> It's the Russian mob are selling it on eBay. They, they realize uh, 20 years later, they're like, why do we have telescope? I don't need telescope. <laughs> Just sell it on eBay. <laughs> it only go up to 200 times. <laughs> it's not even good telescope. Really just has sentimental value. I don't know why we stole it. <laughs> So she goes to buy, she wants to buy this telescope uh, and her brother's going to take the other 10,000 or her cousin's going to take the other $10,000 to spend on TVs and Roombas. Two million pixels of resolution. Everything I ever wanted. <laughs> uh, we find out later. And um, Xbox. And Xbox, yeah. Um, and this is where we're first introduced to Channing Tatum and they get to see him up close, really. Mm-hmm. And who, the decision to make Channing Tatum look the way he does in this movie is mind blowing to me. You mean a discount Vulcan? He, he yeah, a discount fuzzy dog Vulcan. Mm-hmm. Like he, Channing Tatum is a handsome man, and they found a way in this film to make him unappealing. He has this bright blonde goatee mm-hmm. and these blonde eyebrows and like way too much eyeliner for. I don't know why he has eyeliner on. I guess he's just an edgy boy, but <laughs> he has eyeliner. And Brian, Brian has far more expertise in this field than I do. I'm okay. <laughs> and he's got eyeliner on, and and he's got the the Vulcan ear, like the whatever his lichen mm-hmm. ear things are. And he's I, just I do like how the so little, unhandsome. Uh, one of the little trivia bits they they had somewhere. He kept all his ears. Yeah, he kept all his fucking ears. <laughs> Why would you do that? He has fond memories of this film, apparently. Um, Better kept those goddamn boots. Yeah, I would have kept the fucking moon boots, man. Because they get you out of everything, and nobody in the movie will ever decide to take them away yeah, from you. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, the flying boots, take them off them. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so uh, I don't know what this note is, but I have zero G or G written down here. Oh, that was a. Uh, oh, the Titus. Titus yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's right, he's in a room and it's just like, but it's specifically like the PG-13 kind of orgy mm. where it's mostly clothed people just like R- rubbing. rubbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's sexy, I do, but I do not like too how they sexy. Come in, they, they come in and says, news, uh, your majesty. It's like, only good news in this room. Pardon me, Lord Titus. Only good news is allowed in here, families. This is my <laughs> orgy ballroom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't harsh the vibes in this room, man. <laughs> um, they also call the universe the verse in this, and I was like, uh, original. It can be difficult for Terses or people from underdeveloped worlds to hear that their planet is not the only inhabited planet in the verse. So like, Channing Tatum, we find out, is a Lycan 10 or something bred for the military, and they expedition dump all of this very quickly. Yeah. There's so much of that in this movie. It's yes, just yes. characters standing around explaining things. Well, he also explains, like, those are those are blank alien. They are coming for blank because yeah. you're blank. Yeah. Oh, okay. Those things at the clinic. Keepers. They're from the diorite system, but they're genetically repurposed to act as monitors and watchdogs. They're trying to kill Yes. Now I get it. Well, probably that wasn't in the movie the first time, and people watched it and were like, yeah. what is happening? Yeah, this, is, this, is, this is what happened. This has happened so much in, I don't want to say newer films, because I'm sure it happens in older films. Too, oh, I'm sure it does, yeah. Where you, a thing happens, and you have to be like, hey, audience, hang on a second. Wait. Best scene of this ever is in uh, halfway through. Uh, we talked about it before, but in, uh, whichever um, Transformers movie that is, yeah. where the little uh, alien guy. Yeah, Age of Ex- I think it's Age, Age of Extinction. Extinction or yeah, the, where, where they, they just escaped the holding thing, yeah. and they were like, whoa, 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 you're telling me <laughs> that. <laughs> Yeah, 
<laughs> that little robot comes out and is just like, let me explain the plot. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? Okay, great. There's only one situation where it's acceptable for somebody to stop the movie and explain the plot, and that's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> or if they, or if there's a record scratch and they look at the camera and go, you're probably wondering what's going on here. <laughs> that is also acceptable. <laughs> um... Um, I also thought of the, 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 there's some interesting weird tech in this movie. Uh, Channing Tatum has a walk through walls machine. Yeah. He has like a little round thing that he like sticks on a wall and it turns it into like a, makes holes in yeah, it. It's like a, it's like a port. It's like the portal gun. Yeah, it is. It's like a portal gun that you got to stick on the wall. It's interesting. And it, it, the only, I do like it because it, it leads to a great moment later in the film. <laughs> now you're thinking with portals. Uh, so then there's, there's this huge dog fight. This is where he's saving her. And this is where he's being chased by millions of aliens through downtown Chicago. Yes. And this is a, a picture of the end of uh, uh, the super uh, man of steel where they're just like slamming through buildings. Yeah, the thing, parts of the building are falling to the yeah. ground, probably crushing people yeah. to death. But I will say, because this takes place in Chicago, I was like, it's very fortunate for them that Chicago's streets are empty of all human beings at this moment. <laughs> there's, there's a few cars, but there's not a single human soul walking down a sidewalk in mm. Chicago is like all right what what uh, maybe they shot it during maybe it's quarantine time <laughs> maybe this actually takes place now well, they, that's what they're, they're doing they're they're start well they're starting up the harvest they're starting up the the things to get ready for harvest yeah harvesting so they're getting the they're getting everybody all hardy with their with their immune systems getting jacked up <laughs> yeah and so they're just waiting for that to happen and then they're gonna harvest, harvest the them. humans <laughs> gotta get that sweet sweet uh, man nectar <laughs> What are them called? A, no, nectar. They do call it nectar. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. I wasn't making a joke. That's what it's called in the movie. It has many names: Regenex, Resell, Nectar. Sweet, sweet man, nectar. <laughs> sweet, sweet man, nectar. <laughs> I mean, they don't say those specific words together, but they do call it nectar. It's like got four or like a bunch of different names, but one of them is nectar, uh, and it comes from humans. So you could call it sweet, sweet man, nectar if you wanted to. You shouldn't, but you could. It has many names. Regenex, Resell. Sweet, sweet man nectar. <laughs> uh, they definitely murder an entire subway full of humans at one point. The subway, mm -hmm. the L train is coming down and just gets exploded. I'm like, all right, fine. At this point, I was truly trying to figure out how this is going to get like, we just aliens exist now in yeah. the world but no they just literally men in black all of the people yeah and all the people who died and yeah. were incinerated no oh. uh, hey, uh, gas leak Kyle hey, what, happened, gas leak. what happened to Tom wasn't he on the A train who's Tom Kyle oh right <laughs> <laughs> man maybe I just forget those people even existed uh, it's fucking wild but yeah they blow up an entire city uh, just move right on but a bunch of people saw what happened I mean they can't cover that up they won't get everybody, but no one ever believes the ones that slip through the cracks. Oh my god! And then does she? Is this where she gets taken? No, no, yeah, no, no, no. They gotta, they gotta run into. <clears throat> Sean they run into Bean Sean first. Bean. Sean Bean's in this movie, everybody. Stay here. Oh, Sean Bean. He's in like four scenes because there, he was in more of this movie that got filmed and then cut out oh, of the had movie. To have been. Yeah. This we right after this part with the bees, there's absolutely like an hour of this film removed from the movie. Sean Bean exists for two reasons in this film. One is to be like, "Hey, I'm going to give you the motivational speech you need to get your ass moving." Yep. And two is exposition dumps exposition dump he literally just explains what's going on mm -hmm. over and over again but we get to his house uh he lives in a beehive a uh, literally like lives in a beehive house just covered in bees mm -hmm. everywhere um and i just it was a shot it would be great if there was a like a little easter egg and it's just nicholas cage riding a bike through the background <laughs> and then just bangs into the house and falls over and it's like ah Jupiter is constantly swarmed by bees the entire yeah. time. Yeah, she can control them. This can, is like, the dumbest conduct. fucking things <laughs> I've them. ever heard. <laughs> Sean Bean is says, Sean it's Bean so says, Bees are genetically is he, is bees engineered? Bees are genetically designed, designed to recognize, to recognize royalty. royalty. 
You know, bees are genetically designed to recognize royalty. Royalty. Cause Kyle, cause of queen bees. Duh. It, that's, what? No, they're called queen bees because that's what we labeled them. They yes. are actually royal. T- Oof. Okay, Oof. If, you were to dump, <laughs> if you were to dump Queen Elizabeth into a beehive, she's not coming out unscathed. Oh no. Ah. In this movie, she is. In this universe, <laughs> she absolutely is. Uh, she's she's going to be fine uh, because they all royalty, apparently. Bees can recognize it and they do what they say. So fucking it's dumb. so fucking dumb. It's hilarious. It's hilarious because I imagine Sean Bean reading that line and realizing he had to say out loud. He's like, "I'm fucking, I'm Ned Stark. God damn it! I gotta say, bees are genetically designed to recognize royalty out loud in a movie." No, bees are genetically designed to recognize royalty. Royalty. He's also said a lot of other ridiculous things in films. He's been in a lot of garbage, mm-hmm. but. <laughs> okay, you can let go of each other now. He says to her, and then uh, when, and then now we're finally gotten to the point where it's ready to harvest. Mm. Once the population exceeds the planet's ability to sustain it, it's considered ripe for harvest. Harvest. And she goes, "Harvest?" Question mark. And then, but he never goes on any further. But like, obviously, that means harvest it for resources. Like, it's not a mystery what he was saying, regardless of what you think. But just put a pin in that and remember he said that to her later for when something she finds out later that is supposed to be like a revelation, but she should have already. Anyways, um, then the 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 guys show up, the bounty hunters show up to get him, um, and Channing Tatum uh, shoots through a wall for no reason. <laughs> he just blows up a wall with a yeah. machine gun, uh, walking around shirtless because he got cut or something um, Sean Bean also exists in this film to uh, get shot once and to just be like you guys only paid me for three days I'm gonna go ahead and head back to my trailer yeah <laughs> these ones they still capture Ch- her Channing Tatum is also shirtless through most of this yeah they also do like some sort of like oh here's a joke line where he has a female sanitation pad to pl- plug his wound. Is that what I... I didn't yeah, miss that. I missed that I completely. I have to bring this up for a fucking reason because they pulled this straight from the host. Because he, he... Oh, rips, yeah! Yeah, he rips off. He's got the... Co- he rips the that off. Spray. And then he... <laughs> the heel. The, the heel. heel the heel spray. But, yes! Yeah, Sean Bean pulls out a heel spray bottle and heals the wound on yeah. Channing Tatum. Yeah, which must be the, the human nectar juice, right? Because that's yeah, what it, it does. It has to be. Yeah. <laughs> he just sprayed a little human, a uh, little little pureed human juice on his wound, and he's fine. But but yeah, no, it's because I Katie said the same thing. She's like, holy shit, it's like from the host when they have the the cook clean and heal spray. And so they take her back there and get her all like patched up, and she steals all the all the medicine, like, like the cook, cook the clean. <laughs> The Mr. Clean spray yeah. <laughs> My my brain, the way my brain worked there was Channing Tatum shirtless. Why is he shirtless? Also, why am I thinking about Channing Tatum shirtless? Holy shit, that is a beautiful man. He's a very handsome man. Very handsome <laughs> man. He he actually showed up and I put him in random clip in like two episodes ago and now he's in. We're doing a movie. He's in. So they take her. The two bounty hunters take her to the sister. They like betrayed yes. the guy who was gonna take. But her. But here's the mind fuck. All right, here's the mind fuck. I have to go with. What does Shane Tatum do in that situation? He's like he jumps on the outside yeah. of the ship. Yeah. Where does that ship go? To outer space. To outer space. <laughs> That's know. important for later. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, because he, yeah. Maybe he has a space suit. No, he's shirtless. <laughs> you know why? Because he's a handsome man. <laughs> and we need a scene with him shirtless shooting stuff. Uh, yeah, we do. And we get it, which is great. But he is now unprotected in the vacuum of space while this ship is flying off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he he arrives on, they arrive on the sister's planet 
spaceship, whatever. Um, and she explains some more plot at Jupiter for like 10 minutes. She's like, you're a recurrence. You're my mother's perfect genome, DNA genome sequence Which reincarnated in a... Is... <laughs> when the exact same genes reappear in the exact same order, it is for us what you would call reincarnation. This is so stupid too, because then this would imply like... your DNA isn't subject to mutation or any form of, like, evolutionary process. And it would change over your lifetime. I'm not a DNA Scientology scientist. <laughs> Scientologist. <laughs> but I, it, it, it all sounds a little stupid to me. Yes. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, uh, but she explains that they're like that they're the they're the inspiration for vampire myths, which doesn't really make any sense. But sure, are you some kind of vampire race? <gasps> we are the cause of a lot of those myths. And also, all of her guards, all of this, so they're like the Abraxas family or something mm -hmm. like that, and all of their guards. I have to talk. I could talk about the dot design of these guards forever. They're. I swear to God, they're wearing luchador masks, and they don't, I don't know if you noticed this, they don't have arms, they just have little gun nubs. Did you? I, no, I didn't, yes, notice. They I didn't just, notice them specifically. They did, there's a bunch of these guys, they have luchador masks and little gun nubs, and they, they're they like, almost look like Daleks, but they're people, but they're like I did. I remember Eddie masks. Redmayne's lizard dudes. The lizard dudes, I remember yeah. uh, Titus's secretary chick with the huge ears yes they oh yeah the dog or the, i don't know what she is but she's got huge ears that actress i knew her from something it was driving me crazy but so, so the you're sisters, telling me the the way the, the way you defeat her guards is you just tip them over yeah because they can't get back up. they can't get back up they're just like waddle around on the floor like <laughs> <laughs> um and so uh but she's good Maybe? Whoa, no, 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 hey, hey, it's okay, she's on our side. The Brassics don't know any side but their own. Precisely. I don't know. They say she's good. Uh, at least Jupiter's like, she's on our side at one point. So uh, Channing Tatum tries to save her, but and it's like a big standoff, and mm -hmm. Jupiter's like, no, she's on our side. And they're like, okay, and they get on a spaceship with some government people? Who are those people? I have no clue. Welcome aboard, Your Majesty. My name is Diamika Singh. I'm the captain of this Aegis cruiser. Please call me Jupe. There's like the, gov the militaries here? They are supposed to be the good, good, good guys, right? Like I that's think? the one with the the, 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 the... the captain who's like leading and, this and the, the elephant pilot guy? Yeah, the elephant pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get us down there, Nash. <laughs> yeah, the elephant pilot. This movie. It's insanity. But yeah, yeah, them. I don't know who they're representing. Like, the are they the Legionnaire people that Channing used to work for or was a part of? Anyways, they're going to take her to the bureaucracy world <laughs> yes. so that she can get her paperwork done to become queen of Earth. This felt like it was either written by Terry Gilliam or it was just written oh, this part, straight yeah. out of a Douglas Adams novel. Would your majesty kindly place your wrist here? Uh, yes. Yeah, hundred percent. When they get to the 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 planet that they're where they're doing all the paperwork, it was my favorite part of the enough, movie. Yeah, and weirdly enough, this is the most Del Toro thing like in yeah. the film. Yeah. This is the authentic recurrence of her ladyship, the Abrasic Sovereign, and we have come to claim her title. And it's very it's very engaging and funny and like has you know it's like commentary on yeah, bureaucracy. If, if, and stuff. if the film would have held this tone throughout, yeah, it would have been fun. That's the, that's what I'm saying because this is that Guardians uh, Fifth Element tile style tone. And if the whole movie had been this, it would have been fun and good. It mm -hmm. could have been good at least. You need a title survey and gene print identification from Wilson Trusts. <laughs> Whereas they, this is the only moment that's like this, and the rest of it is like edgy lycanthrope boy on skates shooting lizards. It's fucking chaos. Oh, also, she runs into uh, Sean Bean's character's name, Stinger, or something like that. Because yeah, he, because so. bees, because Stinger, his bees, Stinger. Um, but she's super happy to see him. She's like, Stinger! Your Majesty. Stinger, you're all right. Oh. Good sign being Your Majesty. And I'm like, yeah, she thought he did. You know, well, she thought he was dead, but she knew him for four seconds in the last scene. She, they she, had one conversation. He told her she was royalty. I guess you're right. So that's she does love him for that. Uh, Sean Bean, 
hmm, the bees accept her. This checks out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, so they're on the spaceship flying to the bureaucracy place, and there's a couple lines we got to talk about here. Because Mila Kunis immediately falls in love with Channing Tatum. Like, that quick. The fact that I have an uncanny ability to fall for men that don't fall for me. It was unbelievably fast. I, I mean, and that's like the fairy tale influence of this, of the of it. But um, there's some really interesting lines in here. The first one, the first one, is that I don't even know. remember the context. I just wrote this down and hoped I misquoted it, is that... She said he says something to her and about her royal bowels, and she says my bowels are anything but royal. Yeah, your Majesty might want to take a few of these. Portland can be a little rough on the royal bowels. Oh, well, my bowels are anything but royal. <laughs> and I was like, what? Okay, but then she talks about how she falls in love with the wrong people or yes, whatever. Yes. And he, Shani Tatum's response is, I have more in common with a dog than I have with you. Yes. You are royalty now. I'm a splice. You don't understand what that means. But I have more in common with a dog than I have with you. And and then, oh. Lines he walks out of the very room. awkward. <laughs> he walks out of the room. No, no. She says this to his face oh, and then she? repeats it. Does when, she? I thought he had left. But, but she says... I have more in common with a dog than I have with you. I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. Oh, she says, okay. but I like dogs, and then makes like a moaning sound, and I was like, I. I love dogs. Huh. Uh. Nope. Don't like that. Not a fan yep. of that. And then, and then he leaves because she had to make it incredibly fucking awkward, <laughs> and then she just repeats it. Yeah. But I like dogs. But I like dogs. Also, they have a little funny thing in there at the beginning where she can't open the door because technology. I don't really, oh, I don't really know how to work this thing. Oh. But, so they, they do all this bureaucracy, like, shtick about how, uh, the bureaucracy, and then they get out, and they have to ruin the joke by having Mila Kunis go, look at the camera go, I'll never complain about the DMV again. I will never complain about the DMV Ever again. Oh boy! It's like that was the Oh boy! You don't you you explained the joke to us! We don't oh. know. Okay, god damn it. Alright, fine. Who's on first? The guy's name is who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, do you get it? it his name's it's I'll okay, you you'll get it. It's funny. It's funny, <laughs> trust me. There's no way that the original cut of this film wasn't four hours long. There's zero percent there's zero percent chance. Oh. Um because then at this moment this is where... Could you imagine being a special effects artist and somebody coming to you with four-hour film worth of edit? <laughs> of this, yeah. Through? And because the special effects budget on this had to be enormous. The whole movie is CG. Like, everything is. Um, but then, whoop, surprise, Stinger's evil. Or not or evil, but... kind of betrayed them. Betrays them. I see. Good to know what both lies. What is this? Uh, now they go to Titus. This is like our... We're getting, like... This might... This, this this movie made would make so much more sense as a TV show too because there's like these episodic like she mm -hmm. goes to meet the sister mm -hmm. the thing happens okay that's an episode she goes to the dude do all the bureaucracy stuff and blah 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 with that oh then then and then right at the end of that episode Stinger betrays them and then they go to Titus for the next step you know what I mean like it felt like a TV show that was slammed into a two hour movie um, but she goes to the pretty boy Titus um, or kidnapped by him kidnapped yeah well Stinger kidnap basically helps kidnap her to take her there uh, and then he. He does the classic bad guy thing and makes her wear a sexy dress to dinner. Your highness looks ravishing. Classic tr bad guy trope where he's like, I got you this sexy dress to wear. Also, to her, her head headdress thing that yeah. she wears had to have just made her a little lopsided. It kind of extends pretty far out in one direction. Yeah. Yeah, and then he explains to her. He takes her down to the basement where they store all the sweet, sweet yeah. man nectar, and he has thousands of vault. vials. He has a vault, a of vault it, yeah. full of it, and he explains to her in this moment what it is. He goes, "This is we harvest the humans. Th this single vial is like a hundred humans, yeah, or something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. It comes from people. Each unit is refined from approximately a hundred human beings." And she drops it, yeah. and now you got human juice. You got here. human juice on your <laughs> shoes. It's a nightmare. Um, but she reacts like she wasn't aware that they were murdering the humans. 
You said you killed a hundred people to make this. I'm like, what did you think Sean Bean meant when he said harvest the planet? It's considered ripe for harvest. Harvest? Mm. Like, what did you... Okay, sure, fine. All right, I guess you just didn't put one, two and two together there. Um, but Titus wants to marry her because then he can inherit Earth or something. Can you marry me? He says because he's a changed man and he wants to end it, but and also, actually he's also, evil. And it, just to get back or call back to the fact that the same people who did this in The Matrix, humans are in a farm system being used to refuel or recharge. Yeah. Somebody who is recurring theme. Yeah. Recurring theme. Um, and then so they, they, they lock they lock uh, Channing Tatum in a, in a hole. A hole in the ground, but they don't take his moon boots boots off. They don't take his goddamn boots off. But then, but he tries to get out, but he can't. But then they, is this where they kick him out of the airlock? This is where they kick him out of the airlock. Yeah. Of course, the obvious thing that you keep in an airlock is emergency spacesuits. Which makes sense, but not if you're fucking ejecting a person out into space. So they, they knock him out and he, he's able to get one on just in time. Just in time. Why the fuck didn't he need that earlier when he was holding on to the outside of the ship? He held his breath, Kyle, for a real long time. I don't know. It makes no sense. Uh, and then, but he's got his moon boots, and because they didn't take him off, he's able to get out of his yeah his his handcuffs and get the spacesuit on, and then somehow flies gets I don't know. He gets know. picked up by oh uh, the, the, the the military people, yeah. whatever the legion there or whoever they and, are. And Sean means like I guess I'm a good guy. I'm now. a good guy again. I'm sorry I betrayed you. And then the movie turns into the Princess Bride for like 20 minutes. <laughs> it literally turns into the Princess Bride for like 20 minutes yeah. where uh, Prince Humperdinck is going to marry her and he has to <laughs> and Wesley has to come save the day and stop her. Is he alive? Well it just so happens that your friend here is only mostly dead. He's good. Let's go. Fun storm in the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. It's amazing. I, I was kind of wanting, for for a sake of funniness, I was kind of wanting a situation where they're like, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yeah. And Shannon Hayden's like, his ship kind of explodes. He's in the spacesuit. And he's just at the oh, front God. of the thing. And it just right out of the graduate, they're like, no, dude. <laughs> yeah, he, he like smears <laughs> against the window, the space window. And he's just like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, they literally do. They're doing the um, the Princess Bride thing where Humperdinck and he and he's like, "Say man and wife, man and wife." What was that? No. And and they're like, "Dude, that's kind of cool." I thought the like the mm-hmm. the etched tattoo ring thing was interesting. Um, so she's gonna marry him, but then uh, Channing Tatum saves the day and stops her just in time, and she realizes Titus is actually evil and wasn't didn't turn over a new leaf. <laughs> Um, uh, there's a space dog fight. Oh, that was that's how he gets there. He has a big, yeah. the big chaos space. With, with Sean fight. being who you expect at any point to be like, oh, I was oh, fully expecting that whole time because at one point Sean Bean yells, "We're clear." We're clear. And I was like, oh, he's about to die. One hundred percent, he's about yeah. to die. And he doesn't. He didn't actually. We're clear. Uh, but so there, she's like, just take me home. I just want to go home. Go home. Up. Oh. Unfortunate family got kidnapped by Eddie Redmayne's lizard men people. Yep. Uh, and then so uh, she gets taken to Eddie Redmayne, and we're at the climax. This is the climax of the fucking movie mm-hmm. here. We're ready Which, to wrap it up. Once again, having human beings be constantly men in blacked. Yeah. To not remember things. This entire thing is taking place in the storm of Jupiter. Yeah. It's not like NASA doesn't have a fucking telescope there. Or 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 pro or satellite or anything. We've, yeah. We've looked at Jupiter quite a few times at the Cassini probe, I believe. We look. Yeah. I. They, they're just. They have. Apparently, they would have had to install mind wiping 
flashy things like on everybody that works at NASA. All like they just wake like, every somebody, five minutes. It's just like burp. somebody goes in there dressed as the IT department. They just pick the the flasher on there. Like sorry, we've been compromised. Oh, shit. Son beep. of a bitch. <laughs> this is one guy's job. It is to sit at NASA and just like beep. <laughs> like every five minutes. <laughs> beep. Um, and then uh, so uh, this is where we get the best line in the entire film mm-hmm. uh, by Eddie Redmayne. Uh, the performance is uh, top notch. I create life and I destroy it. <laughs> I create life and I destroy it. Yeah, or yeah. it might be vice versa. It might be I create life and I destroy it. Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> yes. You have to get down like this. Eddie Redmayne. I'm probably not doing him too much justice, but he always goes down and talks like this. And then he's angry! I create life! And I destroy it. It's incredible. He kind of sounds like Voldemort in the Harry Potter movies when he's doing it. Uh, Harry. <laughs> life is an act of consumption. The boy who lived. Come to die. He's his. I could watch his performance in this movie for the rest of my <laughs> life. It's that good. Um, but that's their big confrontation. I like some of the ideas in this movie. Now the human being was on your planet, a mere resource, waiting to be converted into capital. Some of the themes are interesting, but it's mm-hmm. it, then her family gets captured, um, and they're like under a clear floor, which is interesting. Um, but then I love. It's just like because of of course. They're like gonna murder her mom, and the way they're gonna do it is like incomprehensible, <laughs> spiky, pointy yes. things. Like, it's, I saw that as like, like, okay, you are in, it, it, you are in like a Roadrunner cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> you are advanced, like science, Super everything. Alien, yeah, well, human, why, whatever. But. Why do you need to have like some comical yeah. like, spinning metal? Shit? It's literally like something out of a, an, an Acme device from a, from a Looney Tune, <laughs> where it's just like a knife, a saw, a laser. It's like everywhere, just like. Nur, 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 nur. Um, but they're gonna kill her. Uh, but then uh, Jupe is gonna turn over, uh, uh, um, abdicate her her ownership of Earth to him, mm-hmm. uh, and she's about to do it, uh, and then she doesn't for some no, reason. No, because. Uh, Channing, oh, Channing Tatum, Tatum blows Channing Tatum. up. Okay, this. How I about that? I don't understand why his entire facility is within the storm of Jupiter. Sure, you could be like, yeah, nobody's gonna come through here, but somebody does get through there pretty yeah, damn easily, pretty easily on a ship that's not the size of a freighter. No, they just, he just flies right in. Yeah, and then and gets that, blown up. <laughs> that enough. That his ship enough was enough to collapse the, the entire, entire thing. Yeah, the gas is reacting to the stockworks. Uh, so then he uh, he's there to save the day. He blows all that up. Uh, there's some, some shooting, some fighting, um, some chaos. Uh, he also sh- fights main lizard dude. Yes. Oh, the main lizard guy, which I think that's another change this movie could have made that would have made it better is don't have all these random lizard henchmen have one that we know and like are interested yeah. in and make him like a character. Yeah. And this one is a nameless lizard. I mean, he's like the main one, but he, we don't know anything. But, like, he doesn't have like an or interesting even, character. G- even give him like some sort of striking characteristic. Yeah. Or like, like give a him a specific or weapon or yeah, a scar or anything. He's just a generic lizard bad guy. I, uh, I'd say to damage one of his wings, but he kind of needs that to fly. <laughs> yeah, he does need that to fly. So they get in a big fight in the basement or in the prison in the place where she's her family is and they're getting everybody out and it's a big nonsense fight um and this is a cool moment where he does he he uses the whole thing mm-hmm. and he cuts the or he like he doesn't actually cut his head off uh she also kisses that goatee after he shows up to save her like, nope no thank you uh uh, and then, uh, then Mila beats Eddie Redmayne to death with a pipe. <laughs> Which is my favorite part of the whole fucking movie. And I thought it was actually kind of great because 
he's like, they're like, he shows up to confront her. And he has no, he's not like a trained military guy. He's he's just like a spoiled, like, brat, like, who owns, you know, who's just like, and so she gets the pipe and just beats the shit yeah, out of him yeah. with it. Because he's just like this frail old man, basically. And he, he falls into a pit of fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he falls off the thing and proves it. And she falls, too. Uh, and she, oh no, she's gonna die. But then, space gates, <laughs> space gates. <laughs> uh, shows up to save the day. And I love my favorite moment here. He's trying to get back to the ship. Like everything's mm-hmm. blowing up, and he's trying to get back to the ship uh, that, uh, that the the legionnaires or whatever are on. And the shots we see of him, he is. It's clearly Channing Tatum on wires going like this. Yeah. <laughs> I just would pay so much money to see the unedited, un-CG'd shots of Channing Tatum <laughs> hanging on a wire, pretending to rollerblade in midair like this. <laughs> I would pay so much money to see that. Oh, and I love the person on the ship. Oh, Stinger is like, come on, Kane. Come on, Kane. Super serious. Like He's like, you can do it, Kane. Come on. Uh, and I think they just make it I don't know how they get saved. Do they get sucked through the wormhole so. with them or something? Yeah. Because they don't make it onto the ship. But when the ship jumps back to Earth, they're just also there. Mm-hmm. And then it's never, who cares? They made it. Um, and she saved. Uh, and she keeps being a maid. Yeah. <laughs> Except, but also she's queen of Earth now. <laughs> and she gets the she moon boots, back. Kyle. I know, she goes back to the... <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't have to clean the toilets, but she loves it now because she's her secret is I own Earth. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we get the the end of the Matrix where they fly past the camera and it's like yeah, and then the movie ends. Every time I saw the space gates. The 90s kid in me yeah. was like, whoa, totally radical, radical man. <laughs> whoa. That's so gnar. <laughs> I love it. Um, Kyle, I look, okay, I said at the beginning, I kind of fucking love this movie. It's terrible, <laughs> but I kind of loved it. Yes. And I would say it's definitely good, bad, because it's not boring. Even yeah. though it's two hours and 10 minutes long, I don't think I was bored at any point mm-hmm. watching it. A nonsense is happening constantly. It is nonsense. It's it's hard to make sense of things as they happen. No. Except for the fact that somebody comes in and explain. to explain the plot to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't it was confusing and there's so much jargon and lingo and nonsense that you will not follow it, but you get what the point is. So it's not like complete it's not like Billy Owens to where I'm like what is even the point of all this? Like, I understood at least what the what the like what the stakes are and stuff. So, like, it kind of works in that regard. Uh, the the performances are either nothing, like fine, like Mila Kunis just is in the movie and fine, or they're Eddie Redmayne and they're the best thing ever. <laughs> um, and the the it, there's just so much nonsense. I enjoyed it, so I would say good bad. Um, I had a lot of fun watching it. I'm gonna give it a good bad, but it's also terrible. <laughs> Uh, elephant uh, space pilot. Elephant space pilot. Yeah, and, elephant and, space pilot. And they're saying like, okay, punch it, and he just goes. Accelerate to full. As always, you can support us on patreoncom slash me for as much money as you want, uh, and uh, you get access to our podcast and stuff. Uh, where we recently did uh, an hour and a half long AMA after the hundredth episode, where we answered every possible question. You can find out who our favorite artists are, <laughs> or uh, what else did we talk? How we met, why the show started, all that good stuff um, is in that episode, that Q and A, uh, which you get if you support us on Patreon. Kyle, sometimes you stream on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv yes, slash... Yes. I'm not, I can't remember which one. Too recently. I might have to do that. Yeah, um, I do too sometimes. Those are on the screen if you want to follow us. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a podcast called This Film's Out where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this is out, um, the most recent episode will have been A Scanner Darkly. 
which is a Philip K. Dick novel and film. It's um, got Keanu Reeves. It does have Keanu Reeves. I've never seen it, but I'm excited for it. I think that's the one that'll be out. And then um, every time I hear a scanner darkly, I just think of scanners, and then I think of head, heads exploding. Heads exploding. Yeah. yeah, a little bit different. A little bit different. <laughs> um, and then the one before that was Tangled, the Disney movie, and Rapunzel, which it was based on. So uh, that's uh, that's what I got going on. That's all what we got going on. Uh, until next time, keep watching movies. Especially fucking Jupiter Sinning. Jupiter Sinning. It's, it's wild. It's on Netflix. It's, it's a on wild Netflix. One, for so sure. <laughs> it is a wild.